Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, Paige Beckers and Juju Watkins. These are names that we hear quite often when we talk about women's basketball. Well, yesterday they showed up and show out in a bid to help their team make it to the NCAA Final Four. Only two players left happy in that matchup. Guys, let's get into it. All right. What is up, awesome people of the internet? So let's recap day two of the Elite Eight. And before we do that, I do want to give a huge thank you to the folks on patreon.com slash sports for your continued monthly support of the channel. If you want to join us there, you can do so at Patreon. All right, guys, let's get into the game. The first game of the day, the, the most entertaining um, uh, game of the day and the, the game that probably will go down as the most watched. This was Iowa defeating LSU 94 to 87. Now this game was all about Caitlin Clark who played all 40 minutes in this game from start from the start of the game. She dominated uh, finishing with nine three pointers, 41 points, seven rebounds, but not just that she had a whopping 12 assists as well. Caitlin Clark showed up uh, either scored or assisted in 25 of Iowa's 32 field goals. Yeah, that is insane, right? The three-point percentage has been a little lower during the postseason, mm -hmm. but tonight, nine, um, yeah. which ties an NCAA tournament record single game. He also passed Diana Tarazi for most threes in the NCAA tournament. I wonder if you could talk about were you really feeling it from three-point yeah. range and how big that was, especially in the third quarter? Yeah, I think for myself, like, I probably haven't been shooting it as good from three over the course of the last five or so games, but even if you told me that, I would – like I would still have 110% belief in myself and what I've been able to do this year. And um, to me, like everything averages out over the course of the year. You know, I've had games where I've been two for 16. I've had games where I've been nine of 15, like it all averages out. And I think that just speaks to the confidence that I have in myself and the time I've put in the gym. Like I know I'm ready for this moment. Um, I thought my shot felt good in warm ups. And it certainly helps when you make your first three as a shooter, when you can see the ball go in. I think I was two of my first three. and. Um, and then I made my first to start the second half, and that, that certainly helped too. And I thought I got some, some good looks off the dribble, and I'm really comfortable shooting off the dribble. That's what I prefer rather than catch and shoot. So um, it was nice to have a, a game where I, I got some, some good looks at three for sure. Iowa for sure wins because not just of Caitlin Clark, but of the entire roster stepping up in key moments when Caitlin got them the ball. So again, uh, it started off with threes for Iowa, and that was Caitlin Clark just hitting bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket. Uh, for the majority of the game, Caitlin Clark was guarded by Haley Van Liff and last year Poa. She was briefly guarded at towards the end of the game by Flaugie Johnson, which I think Flaugie did the best out of all three, defending Caitlin. Yeah, uh, Caitlin's very skilled. She's a great player. Um, she hit some tough shots, um, and there's not a whole lot you can do about some of the threes she hit. Um, and I think, you know, her role, or the team around her that plays a role, they did a good job of executing their role. So, uh, you know, ultimately they play better than us and that's what it was. You know, you had a few possessions against Caitlin down in the fourth quarter. You were able to force some turnovers, force some misses. What went into, you know, taking on that matchup and uh, trying to help spark a, a run? I mean, uh, just study her film. I think my length kind of bothered her. Uh, I'm aggressive. I just wasn't scared. You know what I'm first. saying? When you play a player yeah. like that, yeah, like come. you got to look him in the eyes and really take on that challenge. Um, just try to force her to her left. I know she wanted to step back and my, my length can, you know, bother her a little bit, but, you know, I got to be better. You know what she's going to do. You know what Caitlin's going to do. She's always going to have that step back three-point shot going to the left. Everybody knows that shot, but she always, she gets it off and she, and she continues to make it at a high clip. Um, if she's not hitting that step back three pointer and going to the left, what does she do? Well, she's probably going downhill. She's probably taking you downhill and then turning the corner and getting an easy layup. Or she is um, dribbling towards the basket, defense collapses, and then she finds the open man for the shot. Uh, we all knew the game plan that Iowa was going to have. And LSU just couldn't stop it. They couldn't stop Caitlin Clark, and and her teammates were just hitting shots. And that was the ball game. Our goal coming into this game was to set a ton of ball screens, and that's exactly what we did. And, um, you know, I think they started showing late at the end of the game, which 
can sometimes be a little bit better on me rather than drop coverage. But um, coming into this game, I did expect her to guard me. I will say that. Um, but at the same time, every team we play throws multiple defenders at us. I don't see one person for 40 minutes. And that's what they did. Um, they brought somebody in off the bench that guarded me too. She guarded me a little bit. Um, but also, you don't want your best, some of your best players to get in foul trouble. So I don't know if that was the reasoning behind it. But um, yeah, I think coming into this game, that was what I was more prepared for. But you know, you, you don't get to know what the other team's going to do. So <laughs> I was really happy in the first quarter. She got to the rim quite a bit and uh, came off ball screens. And we really encouraged her to do that because we didn't want her to start out with the logo threes. We wanted her, to, we thought she could get to the rim and we wanted the higher percentage shots to begin with. And so I was um, I'm pretty happy that she did that. And then I'm telling you, third quarter though, she came out with a different look in her eye. And I, there's no, I could tell her all I wanted to that time to get to the rim and it wasn't going to happen. So well, there's not a whole lot of strategy. You got to guard her. Nobody else seems to be able to guard her. We didn't even guard her last year when we beat them. Um, she's just a generational player, and um, she just makes everybody around her better. That's what the great ones do. I think they had a kid that scored 21 and 18. She had 12 assists. Kaylin Clark's not going to beat you by herself. It's what she does to make those other teammates better that helps her score points and them score points to beat you. Um, what did I say to her? I said, I sure am glad you're leaving. <laughs> I said, girl, you something else. Never seen anything like it. But it wasn't just Caitlin who did her thing in this game. Sydney Falter did a fantastic job in this game. She, she impacted the game by hitting some crucial three-pointers. Uh, she finished with 16 points in this game, five assists. And I thought she did a great job defensively as well. And guys, remember, at the start of the season, Sydney Falter was not the starter. It was Molly Davis. Um, but when Molly Davis went out for injury, it was time for Sydney Falter to step up and truly step up. She did. Molly Davis hasn't been back um, with the team in terms of playing. And Sydney Falter has not missed the beat. She has steadily improved, improved, improved. And now she's on the biggest and brightest stage shining. I, I thought she really did have a phenomenal game in this game. But it wasn't just her. It was Kate Martin who showed up as well, uh, showed up and showed out. Uh, she finished with a crucial 21 points in this game and six rebounds. I mean, you, you, can, always, you can always count on Kate Martin. Uh, when Caitlin gives her the ball, Kate, Kate Martin knows how to shoot it. She knows how to shoot it. And I thought Hannah Stokey did a great job as well, uh, battling the post of LSU. Yes, she does foul out of this game, but she finishes the game with eight points and five rebounds. And for the bench, I thought that Addie O'Grady came in the game and defensively did a great job when Hannah needed to get out of the game and um, never just never let up, never let up uh, against LSU. And overall, I thought Iowa, yes, they're a small squad in size, small squad compared to LSU. Uh, but they used their quickness to their advantage. On fast breaks, sometimes you saw Caitlin pass it down, down the court for an uncontested layup. That happened because as a team, Iowa was just faster. And that, that, that means a lot. And that pace that, that, that LSU was going at, it was they were running at Iowa's pace. And that helps Iowa. If, if, if they're the smaller squad, they are going to outrun you. And that's something that LSU just couldn't totally contend with. Uh, were you surprised at all at the pace of that first quarter? Yes. I, um, in talking to my team, we played to their pace. And um, Back. we ended the first quarter with the lead. No, but no. Back first. I think their pace dictated um, that third quarter. I think it really it really hit us in the third quarter that pace. And while talent for LSU might be better than the, than the talent on Iowa's roster, Iowa was, Iowa was by far the better team on the court yesterday. And for LSU in the second quarter, Angel Reese she twists her ankle going out of bounds um, in a play. Uh, she came back in the game uh, of uh, well she came out of the game actually for a sec. She eventually came back in. Um, sure she didn't use. That as an excuse, um, but you can tell that she was kind of hampered after uh, re-injuring that ankle. 
And she wasn't moving the same both on offense and defense. Saw you go into, I think, fell into the cameras uh, in the second quarter. Um, did you twist your ankle at all would be the, the first question. Did that affect you for the rest of the game, if, if it did affect you? Yeah, I did roll my ankle on one of the cameras. Um, and I mean, I'm tough, so I tried to play through it, of course. And this is something that has been going on for a little while now. But I played through it, and I'm not going to make that an excuse um, for the rest of my play for the game. I thought Angel Reese had a fantastic game. She finished with 17 points, 20 rebounds, and four assists. Early on, we saw LSU play through the post to break down Iowa's zone defense, and it worked. Having Angel Reese as a facilitator is smart because Angel Reese is the best passer on the squad. And, and getting the ball to her and having her decide whether or not she's going to try to score or whether, or whether, she, whether she was going to pass it to a teammate, I thought it was smart. And it, wor it worked for LSU's benefit. But when Iowa switched to a man, man defense in the second half, LSU stopped playing through Angel, which I thought ultimately led to uh, led to L uh, Iowa's win and LSU's demise. Um, like the thing that really stands out for LSU is their ability to play through the post. And I thought had they continued to to pass it to Angel and play through her, they would have had a substantial chance of winning this game. Other than Angel, I thought that Flaugia did her thing as well in this game uh, for LSU, trying to get them to the dub. Um, she, she finished with 23 points in this game and six rebounds. Anissa Morrill did all right in this game. Sure, she did finish with 14 points and 14 rebounds. But in my opinion, she missed way, way, way too many makeable shots, especially around the basket. Michaela Williams kind of disappeared for huge stretches of the game. Um, in this one, uh, she finished with 18 points, seven rebounds. But if LSU goes to her earlier in the game, there would have been a good chance that they could have actually won it. And for Haley Van Liff, uh, she didn't have the best game uh, on both offense and defense. She finished with nine points, missing costly buckets, and just ultimately making the wrong reads on offense. Defensively, I feel, I feel like Kim Mulkey um, kept Haley Van Liff on Caitlin Clark for far too long. Because it was clear that Haley could not stop Caitlin. She couldn't stop her at all. Yes, LSU lose this game, but overall, the season has been a journey for them. Navigating with all of the challenges of being in the spotlight and just dealing with a grueling season. We'll see what they do next season. Everybody can have their opinion on Angel Reese, uh, but y'all don't know her. Like, y'all don't know Angel Reese. I know Angel Reese. I know the real Angel Reese. And the person I see every day is a strong person. Is a caring, loving person, bro. The crown she wear is heavy, bro. She's the type of teammate that's gonna make you believe in yourself. The, the leap that I took from my freshman to sophomore year, Angel gave me that confidence to go be a dog. Playing next to a dog every day. And you know, just to see how the media ridicule her. Went through our problems, but like, this is my sister right here. And I'm so proud of her, like, the media, y'all, how they like to twist and call it a villain and all of that, y'all don't know Angel, bro. And I'm just happy that I get to play with her. I get to be around her presence. Her energy is different. Like, she, she just make me a better player. She make me a better player, and that's what great players do. I'll say something, too. Um, I think, you know, Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Facts. Um, people speak hate into her life. I've never seen people wish bad things on someone as much as her, and and it does not affect her. She comes to practice every day. She lives her life every day. She she lives how she wants to live, and she don't let nobody change that. And you know that's the that's the key to life right there. Y'all do not get to her. Uh, let me say it again. Y'all do not get to Angel Reese. So you might want to give it up, throw the towel in, because you're wasting your energy. So Angel's one of the toughest people I've been around. Right here. Go ahead. Uh, Dan Zakrzewski, Outkick.com. Angel, do you have any thoughts on your uh, future plans in basketball? I'll make a decision when I'm ready. I don't really get to stand up for myself. I mean, I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore, and I just try to stand strong. like. I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats, I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. 
And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want to always just know like I'm still a human. Like all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, and, but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything, and I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me, and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you, but keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated, staying who you are, staying ten toes, don't back down, and just be confident. Um, I wanted to ask you, at Haley Van Liff, it's clearly your last last game. Um, if you could just, and I'm pretty sure, having the night she had, um, if you could just speak to the contribution that she brought to this team and everything that she's done, because one game doesn't define anything. I'm pretty sure if anybody can speak on Haley and her contribution, you can. Well, I hope it's not her last game, but if it is, I'm proud to have been her coach for a year. You know, she's got another year if she wants to come back. So does Angel. Uh, I know they have to make decisions, but um, the thing that we talk about a lot on the men's side, we talk about one and dones, right? And how you know terrible that is. Well, you know, you, you go through a period you can't have you know these players for long periods of time. Man, they're selfish. They're going to take care of themselves. Look, everybody's different, and they got to do what they have to do. Haley Van Lith came to LSU after being an abundant shooter, shot it a lot at, at Louisville, had great success, was on good teams. But she wanted, she graduated in three years with a finance degree. She wanted to experience all the things I guess she saw from, on a, from afar with our championship last year. And for her to take that leap of faith and leave her comfort zone at Louisville. You don't see many players do that when she was that big a piece to their puzzle. Um, she has embraced learning a new position, uh, taking less shots. Our last game against UCLA, I thought her stats were very good, but I'm an old point guard, and I see all that. Um, forever indebted to Haley and her unselfish play to come to LSU to play with a lot of great players and learn a new position. That is how the cookie crumbles. Iowa got redemption and defeats last year's national champs. And to Cleveland, Iowa goes. Caitlin, to get back to the Final Four again, to beat the team that knocked you guys out last year, what does it mean to have Iowa in the spot to still be playing a chance to win a national championship? Yeah, like you said, I feel like, you know, it's amazing to be back in the Final Four. It's so hard to get there, especially with this region and how loaded this region was. But, you know, we told ourselves we're the one seed for a reason. You know, we've earned this. We deserve to be in these moments. We're prepared for these moments. Um, but I think we came out here and, you know, our second and third quarters, we played really, really good basketball. And LSU is a really good team. They're hard to guard. They're such good one-on-one -on -one players. Um, you know, they break you down. They make tough shots. They killed us on the glass. Um, but we were just resilient. You know, we never hung our head when things didn't go our way. And, um, you know, that can get you a long way. And, you know, I'm just proud of this group to go back to the Final Four. And, you know, you enjoy this. And then you get to Cleveland and you start prepping for your next game. You know, we want to win two more. And, you know, I think we have the power to do that. Caitlin, you had a kind of a no-lose proposition here. Either you were going to go to Cleveland for the Final Four or you're going to try out for the, uh, the Olympic team. Just how, um, you know, how, how much greater is this than, than that would have been? <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I mean, obviously, like, the Olympics are always your dream, but to be here with this team and to be able to do what we've done and to extend that out another week is – all I could have really asked. That's all I wanted is to win this game tonight and be going back to Cleveland with, you know, the people I love and, and get to play for Iowa. That's across my chest every single time. So um, for me, it's, yeah, it was like a win-win, I guess. I mean, I don't know. But more than anything, like, my focus is 100% on making Iowa really good and um, not really too focused on all that other stuff. I know that'll be there when, you know, my career ends and hopefully that's with a win.
Um, how good is this rivalry or has this rivalry been for women's basketball? And how much do you think that Angel getting hurt, hobbled, whatever you want to call it, affected not just her but all of LSU? Well, we really didn't look at it as a rivalry, honestly. Um, to us, you know, it didn't really matter who was, you know, our opponent for this game. Um, we were really just focused on ourselves. But, like, to have stars that, you know, LSU has and to have stars that, you know, like Caitlin on our team, I think that just really grows the game. So in that aspect, I think it's really it's really cool. I'm sure we got some great viewership tonight in this game. Um, I think a lot of people were looking forward to this game. Um, and uh, I'm not I, – I don't know. For Angel, I can't speak for her, and uh, obviously you never want to see a, an opponent go down. You never want to see somebody get injured. I don't know if it affected her or not. I mean, she came back in the game, and she played pretty well, so um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite sure on that one. All right, now on to the second game of the day where UConn took down USC 80-73. to Now, the good news is they fixed the three-point line on the court, which was a whopping nine inches shorter on one side than the other. That is absolutely crazy. How concerning is it for you that there is like these missteps like the three-point line here <laughs> in Portland? I, mean, I just want to kind of get your thoughts on that. And, and do you think it takes away from, you know, the, the big picture that, that women's basketball is having this moment? Maybe these things were, are, are happening often at other places, other things. But the attention as generated now on the sport is such that things like this are blown up. And maybe this was happening 10 years ago and nobody paid any attention to it. Maybe nobody was even smart enough to, to notice or pay attention. But it certainly doesn't take away from the performance of these kids and what they did. And, um, and sometimes things grow so fast and they explode so quickly that, uh, you know, we hurry up and we miss a step. And I always like to look at it as I don't think anybody in the NCAA committee said, yeah, I know it's, I know it's a mistake, but nobody's going to notice it, so we'll let it go. It was an honest mistake, you know, things happen, and let's move on, you know. The games were the games, the kids were fantastic, and, you know, tomorrow, the next day, this will all be ancient history. Anyway, uh, this game was about one player. Paige Beckers doing Paige Beckers things. Uh, and yeah, Paige Beckers once again has showed the world that she is absolutely that girl. And she absolutely dominated in this game, finishing with 28 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, scoring or assisting on 17 of UConn's 28 field goals. Yeah, that part. Last year was really, uh, the last couple years actually has been really like challenging on my mental um, of me finding joy outside of the game, um, finding joy in the process, finding joy in trials and tribulations, and just, I feel like I've had adversity thrown my way, but at the same time, like, I'm super blessed to be in the position, like, I got surgery for free, I got rehab for free, I'm surrounded by the, my, by the best teammates, by the best coaching staff, um, and so many people that have helped me to get where I'm at today, so just, looking at the positives in life and all that I do have instead of focusing on what I don't. Um, and again, just trying to be the best teammate I could be. It's, it could be easy for me to sulk and be upset and just be sad about what, what life has thrown me um, this past couple of years. Or I could attack it with the mentality of being a leader, um, still being in the gym, smiling, motivating people and being a leader and how hard I worked, because I know people saw me um, in the gym every single day, whether it be Pilates, rehab, in the weight room with Hootie, stuff like that. So that's motivating for other people to see as well. Um, and so just today was one of the most rewarding feelings I've ever felt in my life. Just being, seeing where I was a year ago today, um, just starting to do individual workouts, um, starting to feel the basketball again, get the ball in my hands again and, and play. And now I'm here and with my teammates and my coaching staff, I'm going to the final four. So it's been a very rewarding journey and I'm super, super grateful for it all. Uh, the tough times made me who I am um, and it's built my faith and it's built just my appreciation for life and gratitude for anything that gets, gets thrown my way. It is just beautiful basketball to watch when Paige Beckers is clicking on all cylinders because you can't stop her. 
She can hit the three. She can take you on the dribble. And overall, she's a great facilitator and a tough cover if you are her defender. Mackenzie, you, you obviously took the, the page matchup tonight. Um, one of the more difficult matchups that there is in, in college basketball. It, what was your mentality just going into that and last game? But, but how fun was it to kind of play this and go back and forth with her? Yeah, she's a great player. Um, I think going into it, I was just really focused on, like I said, guarding every action the right way um, in terms of, like, if I'm going over to go over, you know, kind of when she gets rid of the ball, get into her body and make her go the way that we want her to go. Um, you know, I did the best that I could. I think, like I said earlier, any time that you have a, a short mental lapse, she capitalizes on it. I think that's what makes her really good. She's very good at making reads. Um, and she's a, she, she, had, she made tough ones, you know. Um, I thought we, we did the best that we could. Uh, as a team, but yeah, like you said, great player. I, um, I have a lot of respect for her. Decision making behind having McKenzie kind of take on the, the the Paige matchup for you know the the most of the night, and and especially when Paige kind of got f going in that fourth quarter. Was there any thought to putting Juju on her and, and trying yeah. to disrupt that a little bit? I mean, we were supposed to be switching a little bit more than we did. Um, you know, I think it's hard to at this point of the season where you're in, you know, like this type of game to do a ton of stuff different than what your kind of go-to defensive schemes are, but we also haven't played a lot of players like Paige. So the idea was anytime she was coming off something, we were supposed to switch. So there were times with whoever. Uh, so there were times at which, you know, the coverage didn't go exactly as we had wanted. Um, and obviously in transition, things were, were different, but, um, you know, we started switching all ball screens at the end, which trying to get different bodies on her, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll watch the film and say, here, there, the next place we could have done something different. But the idea is we were supposed to have a lot of different multiple bodies on her. I mean, she's really tough to guard in a lot of ways because of the movement. Uh, you know, they do a phenomenal job, and, and he has for so long with all these great players that he's, that he's had. It's, it's not easy to game plan because they're on the move a lot, um, and I think that's, that's um, a critical piece of it. I, I think she's got everything in the arsenal. Obviously, she can shoot it. She can pass it. Um, you know, she's very fluid in transition. She's just a tough cover in a lot of ways, um, and it sounds crazy to say, you know, with her numbers, there were times that I thought we really guarded the actions well, and she made some tough shots. And then, you know, I think they got us in transition off of some of our turnovers. And, you know, you can't, a player like that, you can't let her get anything easy because she's even going to make the tough ones at times. And so I think that's where we faltered a little bit. But um, she's just a tough shot maker and a great all around player. And guys, yes, Paige was great, but it wasn't just her. Aaliyah Edwards has been Miss Steady Eddie during this time for UConn. The last several years, lots of injuries have happened, even for uh, Aaliyah Edwards, but she has been consistent with the squad, showing up and showing out when UConn really needs it. And they needed it yesterday, and she did her thing. She finished with 24 points and six rebounds, and she was just eating down low. Now, guys, it is tough to guard UConn. You have Nika Mule, who finished with eight points and eight rebounds. Um, you have... Elliot Edwards, you have Paige Beckers. This is a tough squad to beat. When USC tied the game in the fourth quarter, you take time out. Was that a matter of adjustments or just kind of trying to settle your team down, maybe get them a rest? And, and how did you see them respond? I think a little bit of both, you know? Um, they play so many minutes that any chance that I get that I can give them a breather, I want to do that. And then I wanted to make sure that we got the right shot by the right person and that we would come out of the timeout, take the lead, and settle things back down again. Last thing we wanted was not call timeout. They take the lead, and now we're in a little bit of a rush or a little bit of a panic situation. I don't know. So they needed a breather. We needed to address who was going to score. We need to make an adjustment on how we were going to guard certain things. And, um, you know, we took off from there. Now for USC, they ran on the speed of Juju Watkins, who once again has lived up to the hype that was set for her. She finished the game with 29 points, 11 rebounds, and two assists. And she put on a great game for sure. Yeah, she wasn't as efficient as she needed to be, sometimes going long stretches, missing buckets after buckets after buckets. 
But yesterday, she put on an amazing, amazing showing, especially as a freshman, to uh, help her team make it to the Final Four. Yes, they fell short of that goal, but it really is going to be great to see Juju Watkins continue to evolve as a player because, y'all, she's already clicking. And once she gets a little bit more efficient uh, as a scorer, y'all better watch out. Y'all better watch out for USC. I just, with all things that have been said about Juju, I need to say this. This kid committed to us when we were 12 and 16. 12 and 16. Once in a while, the belief in me and all that, but once in a while her mom would say, are we recruiting this kid? Are we recruiting that kid? All the people she would go to USA Basketball and say, I can't get them to call me back, but we're gonna keep trying. That's where we were. And now look where we are, right? So her ability to do that and make that leap and perform how she has, goes so far beyond the tag words that we use. And in addition to that, my conversations this year with her never once about anything personality-wise, behavior, hey, you gotta treat this person this way, or have you have to learn this. She came in with it. She's beloved by her teammates, she's a winner. We talk about basketball and we talk about how are you doing in life. And I just, I think that's really important to say. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I told her on the way here, like, you know, these people gotta deal with you for three more years. And if I was a coach, that would be my worst nightmare. So I think, um, just really excited to see her grow. She has, as in, incredible as incredible as she is, like, it's scary because she can still get so much better. Um, but I think more than uh, how good she is, like, Coach G kind of alluded to, like, it's really rare that you get a superstar that can come in. She's selfless. She's mature. She's fear. She's a winner. She only cares about winning. Um, she's fucking 18 years old. Sorry, excuse my language. Um, <laughs> but seriously, like I, I would want to be her teammate every day of the week. Like I, I truly mean that. So I think. Um, this program couldn't be in better hands uh, than with her. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just grateful that I got to uh, be a small part of her journey, and I think uh, SC women's basketball is in great hands. You obviously not what's important tonight, but you did set the single season freshman scoring record. When kind of this emotion fades, what, what does that mean? Um, it's definitely an honor. I mean, of course, like like I said, like. Not really the terms I would like to end on on my season, but I mean, I'm just blessed. Um, this program has just offered me a lot. Um, I'm so grateful for it. Um, and it's just been a great season. And um, the record is great, but um, just just the moments that I've got to spend with this team have, have meant everything to me. And um, uh, I'm excited for next year. Um, and for USC, last night, Mackenzie Ford stepped up in this game. Not only did she um, have to guard Paige Beckers basically the entire game, but Mackenzie also added 24 buckets, including five, count them, five clutch three-pointers to go along with her three rebounds and three ass assists for the game. For Rhea Marshall, she had a double-double, finishing with 11 points and 11 rebounds. And several USC players played okay. Um... And overall, they played okay, but it was their shooting and efficiency that lost them the game. Uh, they shot 70 times yesterday, only going 32% from the field. And you compare that to what UConn was able to do. They shot 58 times at a clip of 48% for their shooting. USC was all about shooting quantity. And UConn, in my opinion, was all about shooting quality yesterday passing the ball around until they found a shot that they liked. And to be honest, that was that was actually LSU's issue as well. Um, both LSU and USC struggled with with that um, piece. It was it was all about getting as many buckets as you possibly could. And that's fine that's all fine and dandy, but at the same time, you have to be able to um, you, you you have to be able to be efficient with your chances. Uh, yes, UConn does barely out-rebound um, USC. Um, UConn had 42 rebounds, and USC had 41. Um, in the LSU-Iowa game, we saw LSU dominate the boards. But ultimately, it is about shooting efficiency. It is quality over quantity, especially when you are in the NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, 
shooting shooting efficiency was difference in this game. And it was a difference in the LSU game as well. We shot the ball, y'all, almost 20 times more than they did. So that's the pace I'm talking about. And then you look at that second and especially the third quarter where we just miss shots. Um, you'll, you'll dissect things like that. And um, yeah, I could probably tell you a bunch of things you'll dissect in X's and O's wise. Um, reverse the ball, just a little bit tougher in the moment. Um, depth. I mean, you could you could just sit and talk all day about the game. Um, only one team finishes the season happy, and boy, we got to do that last year. And somebody will get to do it this year. But everybody else is going to come up here and be sad. And you know, there's nothing wrong with being sad. If you're not sad, that means you didn't invest much. So guys, we have UConn making it far and uh, and making it again to another Final Four. And just to think, guys, this UConn team is made up. This, this UConn team is making it to the Final Four. It's made up of Aaliyah Edwards, Paige Beckers, Nico Mule, and a bunch of freshmen, y'all. Like, I didn't have that on my bingo card uh, at the beginning of the season, especially after we saw player after player after player go down for UConn uh, due to injury. This UConn team basically doesn't really have a bench. They got a seven-man rotation, and they got to hope that no one gets in foul trouble. Um, and it's been working out for them. It's been working out for them. So, uh, do you feel when you everything that you've gone through, everything that's happened, and then to get here, I mean, I think you yourself said that uh, it might take a miracle for you guys to do this. Uh, do you feel like this is your best coaching job at UConn, that, in fact, you did kind of conjure up a miracle here? Um, there, there, there are times when you know that you've, you've maxed out the, the, uh, the, the abilities of your players. Um, I'm a very realistic person, you know, I don't try to put unrealistic expectations on, on players. Um, and when I watched them after what's happened, I, I, did, I did think it would take a miracle. Yes, you know, yesterday was Easter, so Easter's a celebration of miracles, right? And today's April Fool's Day, so it's either a miracle or a cruel joke. But, you know, we'll get there, on, we'll get there next week and find out if it's real. But I think our entire coaching staff probably worked harder at keeping it together, not so much in the, you know, what offense, what defense, and all that other stuff, and just keeping the whole thing together and not letting us kind of get frayed by all the things that have happened. You know, I talked to Lindsey before the game, and, you know, we were just talking about how, how difficult it is to coach in, in a circumstance like that. Um, so, yeah, I think our coaching staff had to deal with with an enormous amount of things this year that we never had to deal with before. And um, I'm really, really proud of our staff. Um, and our president, she, she was here and she's not here anymore. She's headed for an airplane, but I hope she reads that, that uh, yes, the greatest coaching job ever done in the history of women's basketball. <laughs> Obviously each celebration, you know, comes with a different story, a different set of challenges that year. Um, different people, different relationships. Um, this has, as Paige said, been probably the most rewarding one. It felt different. Um, I would say, you know, this group is very special. We overcame so much and learned, for, learned from it, not just overcame it. And um, although a lot of people didn't believe we were, you know, ever going to do this, we did. And um, we don't get me wrong. We don't really care what other people think, but at the same time, it feels really, really good to be to prove those people wrong. So I feel like that's that's one 
that's one part of why it feels so different. So yeah, it's a it's a great feeling, and I think um, going off what Nika said, um, just we've been through so much this year, last year, and um, I think we really had to work hard for this win, and work hard for how far we've come, and. You know, obviously, you guys see us, what, what we do on the court, but it's really behind the scenes that we're really, like, grinding it out. And really, we, we had to go through a lot. And we went through a lot together. So to, to be here together and, and to look back on how far we've come, that's really the biggest rewarding part about all of this. For USC, they should have, they should have their head held high because I thought they played well this season. Uh, they were pretty bad last season. And to make it to the Elite Eight is special. And guys, they got a lot of ballers that are returning and a lot of ballers coming in. So we will see what the Trojans are able to do because they likely will be right back here next season. I remember even Juju's first loss of the season, how she was crying up there with you guys and media. And obviously now I'm sure this loss hurts too for her. How do you think she'll respond from this and how do you think this could drive her? Um, I mean, I've only ever seen her respond to anything adverse in incredibly positive ways. I mean, she is, um, she works harder than anyone I know. Um, her mind is always in the right place. I think she's gonna have to take on some different things, right? Like now it's gonna be more her team and leadership and things that are not just basketball related that I'm excited um, for her to, to, to really walk into everything that's coming for her. But there's no question in my mind that you give her something adverse and she's gonna use that to just get better. And you know, as Kenzie said, that's I think a little scary for, for everyone else. Coach, you're losing a couple seniors, a couple graduates, but you're bringing in a lot of highly rated players, just how excited are you about the trajectory of this program and how an Elite Eight run will uh, vault you guys forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's one of the things I said to them there. They have completely changed a narrative about a program. Um, and that's like really powerful. You know, the the way that the country is going to see USC women's basketball is, is really different than it was, you know, four months ago. Um, and that's a powerful thing for the group here. So I think their legacy is that they got us somewhere. And now it's on all of us to say, what's next? We were not trying to be a one hit wonder, right? Like there's a ton of investment, obviously from our, the people above me, our administration, but now the community's really engaged. And, um, and I, th I think the sky is the limit for where we can go, even though it will look different. I mean, I got seven freshmen coming in. That's, you know, there goes my summer. <laughs> um, uh, Coach B says all the time to everyone involved, like, you know, we had the Ivies last summer. We all got to go back to work this summer uh, with a bunch of, uh, you know, young kids coming in. But we're super excited about the trajectory of the program. And uh, we got to keep working because no one's going to hand anything to us. And, in fact, there'll be more of a target on our back. But we're really excited about, you know, where we're going from here. And there you have it, guys. We have a fantastic matchup of Caitlin versus Paige, Iowa versus UConn in the Final Four on Friday in Cleveland. Guys, you better, you better get excited because we got some great basketball to watch. We have Iowa versus UConn and NC State versus South Carolina. This is going to be fun. It's happening on Friday during the Final Four. Guys, thank you so much for watching the recap. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button if you did. And hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed to the channel. Until next time, guys. Bye. If someone had these kinds of moments like these kids are having right now, they were either compared automatically to men's basketball and always came up wanting, or they were, wow, look at that. Look at, like, there's actually a female athlete that can do that, you know? So it never garnered the respect factor. It was always an incredulous factor. I can't believe that. You know, she plays like a guy, you know. But now, now it's for real. Now they're being appreciated for their, for their incredible talents, the show that they put on, the excitement that they create on the court, the excitement that the fans feel. Um, and God bless them. They've, they've done it. It's almost like they've made everybody come to the, come to the 20th century so to speak, and finally catch on with what, what these people are capable of doing. And 
it's pretty um, it's pretty remarkable. And next weekend should be just as much fun as this weekend. Um, but yeah, I, I hope I hope I hope Caitlin Clark had a personal agenda against LSU. And I know there's nothing personal between me and her, so I, I don't need to be seeing her drop 50 on us next weekend, you know? So I love her. I think she's the best player. Forget I ever said Paige is the best player in the country. I think she's the best player that I, of all time. I don't know who ever said that I said that Paige is the best player in the country. What is the impact of the LSU-Iowa rivalry on women's basketball? Let's start with Angel. Thank you. Um, I think it's just great for the sport, just being able to be a part of history. Um, like I said, no matter which way it went um, tonight, I know this is going to be a night for the ages. And just being able to part, be a part of history is great. Playing against another great player, of course, is always amazing in our viewership going up. And I'm sure so many different people watched us tonight. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to just keep raising women's sports, not just women ba women's basketball, but just women's sports in general. Claudia? Yeah, um, it's good for the game. Uh, women's basketball has gone to new heights. I'm happy to be a part of it. Just happy to, happy to be a part of it. You know, it's not all the time you get to see players like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just blessed. Last year I was a freshman seeing everything. This year I'm a sophomore able to, con um, you know, contribute. Next year I'm going to leave my mark. And grow the game. Haley? Yeah, like they said, I mean, you know, it's an honor to be a part of it. It was an honor to be in that moment. Um, and the best thing about rivalries is they don't end. So LSU and Iowa will play each other again, and, um, you know, we'll have another opportunity. Last one.